Thanks, man. All right. How's everybody today? Everybody ready to go home? Oh, I know you're ready to go home. All right, so you're going to need two things for this message today. You need a buddy, uh, one and two. You're going to need a one and two buddy. And both of you are going to need your phones, all right? And then I'm going to call for two people, uh, call for a number of people in just a moment, all right? So I need, I need one person from CA. See anybody from CA? Nominate somebody. Somebody from CA, I need you to come up here very quickly. All right, whoever from CA, I need you to come up. I need you to come up. I need you to come up. One from CA, one from GCA, one from AAA. I need Little Sky. Where's Little Sky at? From Jackson, Georgia. Little Sky, with the hat on. Yeah, you, with the hat on. I know it's you. Come on up, come on up, come on up, very quickly. You act like you don't know it's you. All right, come on. All right, CA, GCA, where's GCA? Who's from GCA? All right, Helena? All right, GCA? Yeah. All right, Triple A? Triple A? Where's Nadia? Nadia Cleveland? Oh, you coming? You coming? All right, all right. Come on, let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. Little Sky? Jackson, Georgia? Come on, Jackson, Georgia? All right, who came from, uh, anybody come from Valdosta or anywhere like that? Valdosta? All right, Valdosta, I need somebody from Valdosta. Come on real quick, very quickly. Okay, come on, come on, come on. All right, we have that. All right, anybody come from Atlanta area? Atlanta? All right, Atlanta. All right, anybody come from Chattanooga? Uh, there's a bilingual. Yes, you, come on, come on, please. I need your help. All right. One, two, three, four, five. All right, can I get a microphone, Pastor? All right. Come on, come on down here. Come on up here, sister. You all right? You about to be blessed. Okay. All right. She's not all right. All right. Let me get the microphone, Pastor. All right. I like to have a good time in church. What about you? Come on. I like to have a good time in church. Are y'all going to help me preach today? Is that all right? All right. So I need how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need three more people. All right. What I need is somebody who is in college. Somebody's in college. Anybody in college here? Are right, you raising your hand? You coming down? All right, I need your help. All right, that's eight and a nine and ten. Who else do I need? I need somebody who came from. Yeah, pick you. Yes, you. The one who's. But yes, with two hands to your to your smile. All right. All right. And then I need somebody from this section. Somebody from this. My, my man right there with the. Yeah. Yes, sir. You come on up. Yes, sir. All right, perfect. Y'all stay here, right? Everybody good? Yeah. All right, so I need you to tell your name and where you're from. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, listen, whatever you want to tell us. Uh, my name is Jennifer. I'm currently living in College Dale, but I'm from many places. Okay, you're a pastor's kid or something like that? Huh? Any pastor's kid up any pastor's kids up here? Any pastor's kids? Do I have ten? Help me, honey. Do I have ten? My wife can count better than I can. All right, thank you. See? All right, go ahead. Thank you, sir. I'm Caleb thank you for and I'm from College Dale. All right. Thank you, Caleb from College Dale. All right. No, he gotta speak for himself. No, nah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you just say your name? Well, that's the worst part. That's okay. Huh? What's, what's your name? Oh, my name's Preston. All right. This is Preston, everybody. Let's, let's give it up for Preston. I got you now. I got you. I got you. Um, I'm his sister, Julianne, from Chattanooga. Oh, brother and sister. Praise the Lord. All right. Go ahead. My See name. how that worked out? See how God works that out? All right. Seriously. Go ahead, man. My name is Mateo, and I'm from AAA. And where? My name is David, and I'm from Atlanta. Now, is it me, or did y'all notice that the voices got deeper uh, the further we got? All right. Hi, my name is Lindsay, and I'm from Valdosta. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. All right. What did you say? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right, this is Lil Sky from Jackson, Georgia. Is that right? Is that right? All right, thumbs up, all right. My name is Cecilia, and I'm from Atlanta. You're from Atlanta? 
I'm Elliot, and I'm from Cartersville. From Cartersville? What's up? Good to see you in the house. All right, so I want to tell you something. I'm going to, I'm going to tell my story, and they're going to help me tell the rest of the story, all right? So y'all already heard my story. I'm a pastor's kid. I went to Adventist school, elementary school, Adventist school. I saw all these things, and this one text changed my whole life, Pastor Montez. There's this one text that I thought that was going to be crazy. It was going to be something that changed my mind, and this moment changed my whole life. This moment changed my life. I was a pathfinder. Uh, I wanted to be a master guide. I didn't make it all the way. Come on, say, somebody say amen. Y'all know y'all are master guides either. Y'all got the scarf, but you didn't do the work. Come on, talk to me. All right, so, so next thing you know, I end up going to uh, college. I went to Oakwood University. Shout out Oakwood University. All right. And so what ended up happening is I, I went to seminary. Me and Pastor Rustad, we were in seminary together. We did skip class from time to time. Well, anyway, let me not tell you that part. We're the sanctuary. But we did have fun together in seminary and other, other my other colleagues. But it was until this moment, I had already started pastoring. I pastored in Chicago. I pastored um, in I pastored in, I had three churches, Canton, Rolling Fork, and Yazoo City. Yes, there is a city called Rolling Fork in Mississippi where the tornado happened a few years ago, uh, last year or a year or so ago. That's where I was pastoring. But it was not until this moment that it changed my whole spiritual trajectory. And there are some people who may be here who may be having the same experience where you hear of, about God, but you don't believe that he can do it for you. You've heard the prayers, you've gone through the rote memorization. In your church, you still say the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, six days and all the way till the end. And there still has not been a change in your heart. This thing changed me when I heard this one text. This one text in the Bible, Pastor Montez, is a text that changed my whole life. I was a pastor that did not believe in prayer. I had prayed, I had heard things, I had had family worship, I had sung, hear the pennies dropping, I'd done all the things I was supposed to do. I even went to camp, I did the things, I was in the drama groups, I was in everything. But this text changed my whole life. Paul Cleveland, who's in the back, we were sweet mates in school. He lived on one side of the hall, I lived on the other side of the hall. But still, until this moment, it was different. And so what was the moment? I was sitting there. I was a song leader for my conference, and so I was sitting there uh, waiting for the song to happen. And so I led the song, hear my friend preach, then I'm going to go and mind my business. But this was the moment that changed everything. The moment that changed everything came from Matthew. Y'all still with me up here? Y'all still with me? All right, Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 16 and 17. Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And he was preaching about the baptism of Jesus, of all things. Why would that make a big difference? And the baptism of Jesus, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, it says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, he went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens and the earth were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And this is the part that changed my whole life. Are you ready for this? And I want, I pray that this would be a blessing to somebody else. He said, the Bible says, And lo, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus had never done a miracle yet. No one had been raised from the dead yet. Nobody had ever done anything, but Jesus approved his work. One of the things that happens in our church is that we have a lot of good activities, but there's something that happened to me when he said this. He said that you did not have to do anything to deserve the grace of God you did not have to do anything to deserve what God's blessings were for you. You didn't have to do anything special. You didn't have to do anything great. And some of us as parents, in our, in our strongest desire, want to make sure our kids are better than we were. And sometimes for you, the pressure that you're under, it produces a result of anxiety and stress that you have no business having. But when Jesus got baptized, his father said, I accept you just for who you are. That's the text that changed my life. Immediately my prayer life changed. Immediately my relationship with my wife changed. It was six o'clock in the morning 
uh, that had happened at that camp meeting service, and I was immediately changed. And I want you to know today that I believe God has some blessings and some opportunities for change in this place. I got to leave you with just a couple things. First thing I want to tell you is number one, I just need you to step up. Step up when I say your numbers, all right? Number one, God loves you unconditionally. Somebody say unconditionally. God loves you unconditionally, which means that he has already accepted you. You are a part of his family. There's nothing you can do to get out of his family. God wants to make sure that you are the best thing. He wants you to know you're better than anything else in the world. There's no invention that could ever come between his love and his desire to know that you are the greatest thing in the whole world. Number two, number two, step up number two. You are only using a percentage of your spiritual capacity. Most of us only realize that we only have just a few things. There's a Bible text you need to write down, or if you have a partner, you want to go one and two, two and three, three and four, write these things down. Um, I'll never forget when I told you about my, my doctoral journey, and I'll tell you that I did something strange when I went to the library. When I went to the library, I literally lifted up my hands and said, Lord, I can't find this information on my own. So I need you to help me to find the book, the chapter, and the verse that I need for my paper. And if you don't do this, I don't know what I will do. So literally what I would do, I would literally go to some books and I would open the book and the book would literally go exactly where I needed it. For some of you, you got to realize that you're not accessing all of your spiritual power because you may be giving it away when you don't really uh, would, would not like to give it away. Number three, number three, some, somebody said number three. You don't have to seek acceptance from the world for people to appreciate who you are. You don't have to seek acceptance from the world for people to appreciate who you are. Now, I would suggest to you that you are not a copy, you are an original, and people want innovation, not duplication. I just said something there. All right? You are, a, you are not a copy, you are an original, and God wants to do something through you that he can't do through anybody else. Number four, say number four. Oh, there's a relationship waiting for you, the one you always wanted. Be patient and grow. So I'll tell you, this, this is the true story. I prayed for a wife from when I was 12 years old. <laughs> and, and Pastor Montez, God answers prayer. I didn't just pray for a wife, but I got specific. Uh, I prayed for a wife from Canada. My wife's from Toronto. And what I'm telling you, when you pray for what you want, God will give it to you, and he'll give you more abundantly than what you like. Come on, come on. When you got the mic, brethren, you got to do even more. God will bless you in ways like you could not even imagine. And he'll give you more than what you could imagine because God loves you. Number five, somebody say number five. Five, you got to write down a vision for your life and watch God bless it. God is in the blessing business. Recently, I've been reading the book Steps to Christ all over again for my devotional. And I think in chapter 6, it says, all of heaven is waiting to, to bestow blessings upon those who believe in him. I mean, it was like heaven is waiting for us to be happy. Heaven wants us to be I didn't ever, I never heard that in church. And some of you are still here today at this 415 hour because your church ain't like this church today. The music is not the same. The fellowship is not the same. Come on, brethren, the girls don't look the same. The gentlemen, the gentlemen don't look the same. But I believe that because we come together, God has a blessing. But when you write down a vision, I got so frustrated one time, I got so mad, I said, I want to have this by this time. 80% of the things that you write down will happen. Come on, talk to me. All right, so number six. Somebody say six. I heard you, baby. Knowledge gets you the job, but emotionally intel emotional intelligence help you to get promoted. I wish somebody would have told me that earlier in my career, that you know there's some people who may not be the best skill, but they have the best soft skills. A still a thank you, sir, a thank you, ma'am. Good to see you today. God bless you today. All those things still work and are relevant. And you got to emotionally self-regulate yourself. You can't always fly off the handle with somebody. You might want to fly off the handle. You might want to text them. You might want to put it on social media about how you feel about them. And guess what? It's not worth it. It's not even worth it half your time. Number seven. Number seven. Somebody say seven. 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 Seek excellence, not perfection. 
And I would suggest to you that I used to want to be perfect. I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to be the best perfect person in the world. But guess what? I don't want to be perfect. I just want to get better. Come on, talk to me. And one of my friends says, Eric Thomas says, that you got to have some average skill but some phenomenal will. Some people, you got to want it. Nobody's going to give you anything anymore, but there's some things that God wants you to have, and you have to go and get it for yourself. Number eight, somebody say eight. eight. What you are doing now is preparing you for your future, your time, your resources, and your relationships. Your growth for tomorrow is determined by what you are prioritizing today. If you exercise now, guess what? It will e be easier to do it later. Come on, talk to me. And then number nine, I, I got to tell somebody who might be going through something in their relationship that love will win in the end. That's right. It's all right. I made this determination that when I was in school, guess what? If they, if they don't want to be with me, they're going to be losing out something for the rest of their life. Something that they may not like, somebody that may not agree with me, but guess what? I'm going to get better and better and better. And I'll never forget where I told somebody, I said, you know what, just because you look differently than me, just because we may have some disagreements, there will be a time when you come back and me and you meet up at a camp meeting or a convocation or an alumni gathering, and you're going to wish you married me, baby. <laughs> I really do believe that love will win in the end, but we got to prepare for it by being friendly with as many people as possible. And then finally, number 10, somebody say 10. Oh, I believe your dreams are possible. We don't have to put stuff on the shelf to believe that God will take care of us. I believe that God will open doors that nobody can shut. And I believe that God says to us in 1 Corinthians 2.9 that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of humanity the things that God has for us. I believe that God wants to open up some doors and God wants to bless some dreams in this place. And today, I want to bless somebody. I want to encourage somebody today. Somebody came. Who came from the furthest distance? Who came from the furthest distance? Jackson, Georgia. Where did you come from? Valdosta. God bless you from Valdosta. Come on, say amen. All right. All right, where did you come from? Atlanta. Came from Atlanta. God bless you from Atlanta. All right, we got to make sure to take care of somebody over. Come on, sister. We got to bless you today. When you come into the house of the Lord, you got to know you're blessed. Come on, thank God for Chick-fil-A. Uh, and then the other thing I want you to know is that when we are faithful, God will give us more than what we ask for. Now, the other people up here, they don't have anything that is going to be uh, eternal. Come on, say amen. Chick-fil-A will go in, <laughs> and Chick-fil-A will come. Oh, come on, talk to me today. But I want to tell you today that the secret to our spiritual power, the secret to our uh, being ready to do great things is, is spiritual power. I don't care where you come from. It doesn't matter what, how big your church is. It doesn't matter what you've been going through. I want to let you know that God has a plan for your life. God has something for you to do. And for some of us, we got to take out some time to do it. So I, got, I have a resource for you that I want to give to everybody who's standing up here, the others who are standing up here. Who, who is standing up here? CA. All right, I want to give you something. All right, here you go, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And here you go. All right. So I want you to know that when we depend on God, God blesses us in ways that we could not imagine, but he opens doors and give us, grants us dreams, grants us access to resources of heaven. And I want you to know today, before you leave, that God has a blessing for you. I know this is the last service. I know you're about to get back in your car. But I want you to know that God wants to grant you some dreams and give you access to heavenly resources. There's no secret to what God can do. God can restore some dreams. He can do everything for you. Christ Object Lessons, page 333 says, with the will of humanity, when the will of humanity is in cooperation with the will of God, it becomes omnipotent. And I believe that God wants to do something through you. He wants to do something amazing through you. And he wants to start that work today. I pray that today, has been a blessing for you. I pray that God would open doors for you like you've never seen before. I pray that God would grant you wisdom to some challenges that you may be having in your life. And I pray that God would give you wisdom in order to deal with things that you're dealing with. Today, I just want to pray for you and just ask that God would bless you in ways that you could not imagine. And I'm praying that God would do for you what he did for me. And that is to let me know that I'm accepted 
I'm loved, I'm cherished, and I'm valued by him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for those who came up here. Thank you so much for those who are standing in the need of prayer. And I ask, Lord, today that you give us wisdom to be able to do the things you called us to do. Lord, you called us to be the head and not the tail. You called us to be great. And today, Lord, we're praying that you would please open up a windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we cannot even stand room enough to receive. Thank you for those who came up, and thank you for every person who came in this place today. I pray that you would let what their, what their experience was today stay with them. Lord, some people are the only Adventists in their family. Some people go to public school, and some people go to Adventist school still feeling alone. So I pray today, Lord, that you would please be their unseen comforter, unseen guide, unseen encourager. But Lord, as you have done for me, do it for somebody else. Let them believe again. Let them see that you're able to do it again. And Lord, when, uh, if we never meet again on this side of heaven, if we only meet on the sea of glass, we pray, Lord, that you would allow our lives to be of such that we can meet you in peace when you come again. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.